hey guys and welcome back to my channel today i'm doing yet another true crime video and we are going to be doing the story of jade panayotu and christopher panayotu if you're new to the channel i do these types of videos every single week so definitely do check out the playlist i have a couple that i've done already and i'll definitely be doing more in the near future if you feel like i've made a mistake somewhere kindly feel free to fact check me in the comments down below i do make it a point though to thoroughly go through the case as best as i can before i make a video so the facts are as accurate as can be now without wasting any time let us dive into this video Christopher Panayotu and Jade Engs first met in 2004 when they were only 18 years old. They met through mutual friends and they started dating immediately. Jade would go to university the next year and would start her teaching degree. Chris, who came from a very affluent family in the Port Elizabeth region, would instead immediately start working in his family business and would later open two of his own. He owned an OK grocery store and a club slash restaurant in Algoa Park called Infinity Cocktail Bar. Things were going really well for the couple. Jade would go on to get her teaching qualification and Christopher Paniotu would go on to build on his businesses and they were doing great. However, in 2012, a year before they got married, things started to go south. Christopher met a 22-year-old who was working at one of his stores at the OK Grocery Store. The young lady's name was Chantal and they started dating immediately. Christopher would continue with both relationships simultaneously. Although he spent most of his time with Chantal who worked at the grocery store where he was also spending most of his time because he owned the place and he wanted to oversee everything that was going on. People who worked at the grocery store and around the mall where it was situated reported later on that they used to see them frequently and they were very affectionate with one another. Christopher Panayoti's father found out about the affair and he was not having any of it. He literally told Christopher that if he does not end the affair immediately, he is going to disinherit him. And the reason he was so blunt about it is because him and the family had already known Jade for eight years at that point and Chris had already proposed to her, so their loyalties lay with Jade. And another thing is that they also felt like they didn't trust this new girl because one, she was a teller at OK Store and they really didn't know where or how this whole thing started or why for that matter. So they literally told Chris, if you do not stop this affair, we are going to disinherit you. In 2013, Jade and Christopher finally got married in a beautiful ceremony with their friends and family in attendance. To everyone watching, they seemed like a beautiful, happy couple who loved each other dearly. In the same year, Jade started working at Rebecca Girls High School as a teacher. She taught grade fours and grade fives, and everyone who knew her or was taught by her said that she was a sweet, loving teacher who absolutely was amazing in what she did. When she got to Rebecca, she struck a friendship with one of the teachers named Sharice Swanapool, who also stayed in Port Elizabeth and uh, was teaching at Rebecca High School. Rebecca Girls High School is in Newtonick, and it's about 30 minutes to 45 minutes from Port Elizabeth, where Sharice and Jade stayed. So what they decided was that they'll do the lift club and they would pick one another up on different days and would drive together to the school. So whoever was picking the other person up had to make sure by 6.30 a.m. they're already at the gate. So that is what they decided on and that is what they did and it worked really well for them. Therese and Jade would build a very strong friendship. As a result, Jade would confide in her new friend that her marriage was really not going well and that her husband, Christopher, spent most of his time at work and they really did not have any time together. Jade also penned down her feelings about her marriage on her personal diary, which they found later on after she had passed away. And this is some of the stuff that she wrote. She wrote, I want a normal life. A husband that comes home at a normal time, has a normal job and makes time for his wife and family. And somebody who doesn't hide and cover up, always respects and puts his wife first, can understand and see how having all the money in the world is not as important as building a life with his wife. Another entry in Jade's diary reads, I wish I laughed as much as I cried. I wish I smiled as much as I frowned. 
Unfortunately for Jade, things did not get any better. In fact, they got worse. In early 2015, their relationship was at its coldest. However, Chris and his mistress of three years at the time were still going very strong. He would take her to weekends away and claim that he's going away from work and was constantly buying her new items. Little did anybody know at the time but Chris was going through financial troubles. The club and the grocery store were not going as well as he made it seem. In fact, they were slowly going down. Chris had just applied for a 2.2 million rands loan. This was later revealed in court proceedings. And the financial pressure of taking care of two women was really starting to build and take its toll on Chris. March of 2015, this is when it was revealed in court that Chris Panayotu started plotting the death of his wife. He decided to approach one of the him, a man called Luyanda Sioni, who worked as a bouncer at his nightclub. He literally said to him that can he please arrange a hit for Jade or find someone who could kill his wife for him. Luyanda Sioni, who stayed in one of the townships of Port Elizabeth, later claimed that one, because he feared for his job, and two, he feared his boss generally, he decided that he would oblige with the request and find two well-known criminals from his neighborhood and uh, basically ask them to complete the hit on behalf of the husband. And basically, that is exactly how the dominoes started falling. Chris Panayotu gave out strict instructions on how the murder should be executed, and he told them that they could do it in the morning because his wife went out very early at 6.30 a.m. to wait for a friend outside. And because it was late autumn, beginning, almost beginning winter, it was slightly dark outside, and it would be the perfect time to actually complete the, or the murder, and they should make it look like a robbery and take her rings, her watch, and any money that she has with her. And because of that, it would literally look like a robbery gone wrong. And so the date was set and the show was literally on the road. They decided on the 20th of April, they would execute the murder. Sioni recalls asking his boss if he was absolutely sure about this because there was no turning back once they have actually started with the plan. And unfortunately, he would say yes, and they finalize everything, including how much it would cost to take Jade's life. The 20th unfortunately came, and the men organized by Luyanda hired a car and made their way to Algoa Park to a complex where Jade and Christopher Paniotu stayed. When they arrived, Jade was already standing outside and a few moments later her ride came and they decided to cancel it and follow through with the plan the next day because they were just worried that they would probably have to kill Jade's friend as well uh, or she would have to be, she would actually ultimately become a witness if they just killed Jade alone. So they decided no, they were going to go back home and try and come back the next day and just make sure that they will be there slightly earlier. Leander Sioni later expressed to the police that this really infuriated Christopher because he did not understand why they did not follow through with the plan. He told Leander to tell the hitman that they better make sure that they do it the next day. And the following day came and it was the 21st of April of 2015. The men decided to go a lot earlier on this day and they arrived before she came out. They waited for her to come out and await her ride. While they were waiting, they decided to change the plan a little bit. Now, instead of robbing her on the spot and killing her, they decided that they would take her with them, essentially kidnap her, and they would go kill her somewhere else. This would give them time, just in case of friend was on the way then she would not find them in the middle of what they were doing so normally jade's friend miss swanapool would whatsapp her when she was on her way so that she could get out and this is exactly what happened on this day as well jade went out of her complex immediately 
and was ambushed by these men and she was put in the back of this hired vehicle and uh, when her friend arrived unfortunately Jade was no longer there and she was immediately panicked because she found it very strange never had it happened that she what's up Jade and Jade said she's on her way up uh, out and she didn't come out so she panicked but she assumed maybe she forgot something and had just rushed in uh, to fetch it and would be out again so she waited for jade in the meantime as her friend waited for her outside her complex jade was at the back of a vehicle with people who planned to kill her fortunately for jade she had no idea and when they asked her for a bank card and her pin she probably thought that they were going to just um, take her money rob her and ditch her somewhere unfortunately that was not the plan so when they asked for her bank cards and the pins obviously jade obliged and the men stopped at an atm and took out some of her money and then they proceeded on a dirt road and ended up in the middle of nowhere this is unfortunately where they decided to shoot jade twice in the back and one in her head and this is unfortunately where jade lost her life and they left her there guys in the middle of nowhere and they proceeded on to try and cash out more money from her atm cards and mind you these are people who are originally going to get paid for this so they decided on top of that they were going to pay themselves with the money that they would be debiting out of her account which is just atrocious it was later revealed in court that the next stop was going to be a sangoma, a local one where they would go for traditional cleansing. Apparently, this is done in um, cases where someone has killed someone. Now, in order to get that spirit of the person off you, or if you don't want to uh, be found out, then you can go to a sangoma and then that sangoma would uh, cleanse you of it. So it was revealed that the gentleman, after all of that, they went to a sangoma and essentially confirmed to the summer woman that this is what they had just done so they are asking for a uh, cleansing While all of this was happening on the other side of town her friend was still looking for her she knew immediately something wrong had happened because one she she texted uh, Jade and told her that she's coming and Jade said that she's coming out immediately so literally Jade had disappeared into thin air she started searching for her the hashtag find Jade started trending on all social media platforms and everyone felt so sorry for her husband and her family and prayed for her safe return a few days later, unfortunately, a body was discovered, and the whole family was devastated, including the country. Her family had put up a hundred thousand rands for a reward for any information that would result in the finding of Jade. And that hundred thousand rand now was going towards anyone who would come up and tell the Jade Jade and South Africa essentially what happened to Jade Panayotu. Unfortunately, the very next day, the police would arrest the first suspect, which is Luyanda Sioni. Someone had snitched on him and he was arrested and he was taken to Fort Beaufort where he would later confess everything. Now, the police kept all the cards to themselves. Basically, they kept that they had arrested Luyanda Sioni and they kept that they had, uh, he had confessed. So what they wanted to do is they wanted to go undercover to Jade's funeral to see how Chris Panayotu was acting. Jade Panayotu's funeral was beautiful and befitting of the amazing character she was on Earth. It was broadcast live on television, but what immediately struck the police and a lot of people that were watching was that Chris Panayotu barely cried. He literally sounded like he was crying, but there were no tears. And people immediately responded to the fact that he had done a beautiful eulogy, but that eulogy was literally stolen on the internet. It was written for a wife, someone else's wife who was called Jennifer. And all that he did, he literally took out all the Jennifers from the poem and inserted Jade. Now, as much as this is not a crime, but it was grossly suspicious to a lot of people who were watching and it literally trended on social media. I I never quite figured out why she gave the heart to me. Jade was a superb bar. There was nothing in life I could do without Jade by my side. Jade was my drive to do better. 
Jade kept me going. All the mounting evidence, the police still wanted more. They needed to make sure that what Luyanda Sioni had told them was true. So they devised a plan that they needed to trap Chris Paneyotu. So what they would do is they would wire Luyanda Sioni, put a video camera in his car and request him to go to Chris Paneyotu's house and they needed to have a conversation about the murder, the plotting of the murder or anything that has to do with the murder. And that is exactly what happened. On the 29th of April, the day after the funeral, Luyanda Sioni went to visit Chris Paneyotu and this is what happened. <laughs> Why? I don't know. Like, Baba called me and he told me, like, police were there at my house. Yeah? Yeah. So, every, like, everything now is changing now. Every, but why are the police off to you? That's why I don't know. I think there's an informer somewhere, somehow. You know? Did, did these guys flip? Which one? Your no, friend? Yeah, Caesar. Did they tell anything? No, even them, they are in a, on a run. Oh, is it? Yeah. Because I told them and they must not be here. Yeah, that's why they are on your own. Where are they going to? I don't know. They didn't tell me. Because I, I even changed my SIM card. Now. Yeah, but you need to change it again now. Yeah, after this. You need to stop going in this place. Yeah, after this, after this, I'm going to stop. Like, you, you, I'm going to call you in a, a new number. Huh? This one, okay? What? I'm going to call you in a new number. No, you're not. You just miss call me. Okay, miss call you. Okay. Don't phone me or SMS me. So, what's going on? What's... I don't know, bro. It's just thing. I didn't see that it's going to be like this. Yeah. How much is this? Plus minus five. How much is this? Who are you going to know? I'm going to be, I'm going back to check this place. I'm worried about my family, you know, just... What's this thing? I didn't know that it's going to be like this. I thought it's going to be easy, you know? Yes, but why, why did they say to you when they fetched you the other day? Yeah. They fetched me and then they asked me questions. Eh? Yeah. What did they ask you? Fucking questions. Eh? Fucking questions. Tell me. Yeah. Nothing serious, boys. Did they ask you if you were involved? Yeah, sort of something like that. So what did you say? Yeah, uh, no, I lost, I lost their way there. Those were stupid ones. So I where did they take you to? No. They did place. They, we, we went to, what do you call this? There, in the station. Yeah. From there, they, they wrote my statement. So, like, they were asking. And then, in my mind, then, eh, mm -hmm. it came like you, you told me you were going to be investigated. Yes. Yeah, so I was ready for that. Yeah? But I was not ready. So, why are you running away? No, they keep coming to my house. Did you take your phone anyway? No, phone, your, the other phone. Yeah, I destroyed it. Did you? Yeah, you told me to destroy it. Then I destroyed it. Yes. Yeah. And the SIM card and everything. Everything. I'm not using. Did you throw it away? Yes. I'm not using Vodafone now. You see. Okay. I'm using this phone. This so they didn't ask you anything about me. No. Or if I'm involved with anything. Yeah, but I. Uh, I haven't. They asked you. Eh? I haven't. They asked me. Yet. Yes, they asked me. But now, but now you've been phoning me all day and they're tracing my phone, don't they? So uh, the thing is, uh, who, who could I call? Because I have no one to call. I, I know, know, okay, but yeah. now you must destroy it and I, I have to tell them you phoned me. Otherwise yeah. they're going to think I'm involved. Yeah. So, so you need to destroy that phone now. The phone yeah. and the and the SIM card, my boy. Both. Yeah. Just, you know, no, no, no. Huh? no, don't trust me now. No, I'm just checking. I suppose to, I don't trust you now because... Just they think that of the police that are coming to me. I'm not sure my life, I didn't say it, but they obviously seeing who I've been phoning. They are taking my phone and my, every number I phone. They've investigated my family too. Well, no, what is it did? Somebody said something. Yeah, because this is like a murder thing now. It's not like a robot or something. But that's what I said to you. It became a kidnapping and then a murder instead of just making it a, a robbery outside yes. the house. Shit. Like every time I'm thinking about my family, you know, I'm thinking about the other, I'm thinking about the, the two little girls, you know, I'm thinking about my junior. They the went time. to search your house, Sianda. Sianda, say so. You see? But there's nothing there. No, there's nothing. No, there. she stops this. I'm 
it's just my number one. I'm sure I'm just just I'm not safe anymore because I have to run away even from Caesar. Because they, 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 I told them also, they say that man was too little because now they are running away too. Yeah. Yes, but it's because of them. They made it. They made it the way they did. They made it so big. But they've run away, eh? How yeah, many of them? I don't. I, I, I only it, know Caesar. Is it black guys or colored guys too? Caesar is a black guy. And others? I don't know if they have any more way there. But I know Caesar because mm -hmm. I was communicating with Caesar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I don't think this is what we're alone. Okay, listen to me. I'm gonna report that you phone me now. And then they're gonna call me. No, but you're gonna destroy the phone. So you're gonna give me them my number? Hey? This number? Yes. I have to turn to the investigating. If I lie to them, they're gonna take me in. So I'm keep telling you, in, in half an hour, I'm gonna phone the investigating officer. He was at my yeah. house now. Now that's why I can't talk to you all the time. And my uncle is all around me. So I'm going to tell them that um, you came to see me, you wanted to borrow money because people took you for questioning for steroids. Yeah. You need to go hide in Jeffries for a while yeah. and keep quiet. So you're going to support my family? Eh? Siana, the poor seller, you know, is young and in steroids of less. You know more about the rent for the gym. Well, yes, you. but I can't do anything now. I'm under investigation, so I can't just give over money all the time. So yeah. don't worry, me and Sianda will talk. Yeah. Okay? We, are you going to hide out that side in Jeffries? Yeah, I'm going to stay while I'm there. Well, I guess I'm safe there too. So I'm going to say you're going, you, you must destroy your phone now, ne? Yeah. And the SIM card, and I'm going to say you told me you're going to East London. That's fine. So you're stay going to go East London? Yes. Okay. Okay? Okay. 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 Yeah, I'm gonna be okay as long as they never know about us, Tando. Yeah. I never ever I only ever helped you with the gym, I never did anything with you. I'll sort yeah. out your family, you hard low, okay? Okay, sure. You need to be gone for a few months till this thing calms down. Okay, so I am gonna ask if I need something I'm gonna miss call you. No, not on this number. Not on any number. You're gonna miss call me once, then you're gonna wait until yeah. I get another phone and some card. Okay? Yeah. Alright? Okay. There's about five there. Sort okay. yourself out. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's Because I'm all out now. This thing's cost me a lot of money. The family's also looking at me. Yes. Okay. This thing is not It's not a little thing no, because these boys made it big. I told you to let them do it outside the house and take the bags and the rings and then they didn't take the watch or anything. They just left everything. They just left everything there. You see, so it looks like a hit now. So they are after me and that's why I can't meet you just like this in front of people, Tando. Okay. okay. Don't find and don't SMS me, they're watching yeah. the SMSs because okay, you said the reason that you my SMS is you don't reply and then me at the other side I'm hiding and then like I know but you need to give me time. So from now on, you just give me one missed call on this number first time and never again. Don't ever phone me or SMS me to this number because they are listening to us. Even now? Yeah, well, yes, I put it off. Okay. But you, you now. No, but they listen. when you're talking on the phone, they're listening. That's why I have to report this now. Okay. All right, I'm going to say going to East London. Okay. I'm going to take it. Okay. Cheers. And exactly after this recording, two hours later, the police were like, we have all that we need and we are going in for this guy. So at 11 p.m. on this very night, they went in and they arrested Chris Panayotu. A court case began. The hired gunman as well as Chris Panayotu would all be tried together. Now, Luyanda, because he was a state witness and because he had confessed, was not going to be charged for Jade Panayotu's murder as long as he kept to his end of the stick and testified in court. Now, unfortunately, when it was time for Leander Sioni to testify in court, he got onto the stand and he retracted everything that he said. He basically said that the police had forced him into a confession and he was lying lying and everything that he said was not true and basically he was coerced into making the confession 
Now, the court did not uh, believe this, and basically they declared him a hostile witness, and they took his initial confession as a testimony, and he did not have to testify. However, they took out his immunity, so basically now he was going to be tried for the murder of Jade Panayotu after Chris Panayotu and um, the two gunmen. Uh. Luckily, the evidence that the police had was enough, and Chris Panayotu, as well as the two gunmen, were sentenced to life imprisonment for the murder of Jade Paniyotu. On count one, conspiracy to murder, accused number four is sentenced to 15 years imprisonment. On count two, robbery with aggravating circumstances, accused number three is sentenced to imprisonment for 15 years. On count four, the murder of Jade, accused number one and accused number three are sentenced to imprisonment for life. Court of and on that note, we have come to the end of the video. Please make sure to check out the rest of the playlist. I have many more of these type of videos, so definitely check them out. Thank you so, so much for watching, and see you on the next one. Bye.